Hi, I'm Dr. John Martin, and welcome to Ivy Family Health Updates. Here with me today are my brother, Dr. Ed Martin, my sister, Dr. Kathy Martin, and our very special guest, Dr. Manjula Jagasathi. Dr. Jagasathi was is a graduate of Harvard uh, University. She then went to the University of Pittsburgh for her medical degree. She then went to Yale, where she did an internship in internal medicine, followed by a residency in dermatology at the University of Miami. She is a world-renowned expert in dermatology, a great speaker, and we're very happy to have her here today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jay, for coming, and she's going to talk with us today about skin cancers. Okay. I think the most important thing to realize about skin cancer is that it's highly preventable. The use of a good sunscreen uh, with the key ingredients, micronized zinc or micronized titanium, are essential in preventing skin cancer. Even after you've had your first skin cancer, it's a common m misconception that you could not prevent others, and that's not simply true. Studies show that even after one skin cancer, if you then use sunscreen afterward, you can certainly prevent recurrences or skin cancers in other areas. And the thing that's really revolutionized the treatment of non-melanoma skin cancer, these are basal cell skin cancers or squamous cell skin cancers, is the topical application of chemotherapy agents to make them smaller and thereby reducing your, your surgical scar and the impact of the surgery on your life. So the first of these that's been available now about 10 years is Epidex topically. It's 5-fluorouracil. Um, this is a product that can be applied in a variety of different regimens, um, once a day for two weeks, once a day for four weeks, etc. It causes quite a bit of irritation, but then once you get over the irritation, you tend to have a very nice smooth skin appearance, and most of the abnormal cells in your skin cancer or your pre-skin cancers, which are called keratoses, are also smoothed out, and the face takes on a nice appearance, and it prevents future skin cancers. The more newer agents are aimed at stimulating the immune system, the skin's immune system, in fighting off skin cancer. And the prototype of this is a cream called Eldera, of which there will be numerous, numerous new ones coming out in the next three years, which are supposed to be very highly potent. So you should definitely ask your dermatologist about these types of medications for your skin cancer before you have them removed. The gold standard is to get it surgically removed, but perhaps you can make them smaller by applying one of these agents. So they work very differently. Though. They work very differently. Um, the chemotherapy agent, as I said, is basically kills the cells that are abnormal, and the immune system modulator stimulates the body's immune system to fight off the skin right. cancer. So it's a more global thing, and that's why it's kind of the way of the future. Um, so is this first choice usually, the Aldera now? Nowadays we're doing Aldera first choice simply because most people don't like to go through the irritation and the recovery associated with the chemotherapy agents right. like Epidex. Well, Ed did the Epidex at one point. He was telling us, yeah. well, it looks like you have measles. <laughs> yeah. It's really frightening to what you have to appear in public. Yeah. Or even like road rash yeah. or burn, it can look like. So. So it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. So what do these skin cancers look like? Um, essentially, anything that you have is a non-healing sore, a rough patch on your face, or a, a sun-exposed area. Even in a non-sun-exposed area, anything that's pink and irritated or has pus and will not go away for more than a month is something that the dermatologist needs to look at and perhaps biopsy. Now, we will talk about melanoma-related skin cancers, which are much more serious in a different segment. Okay. Now, the basal cells, um, you know, I do a lot of those, obviously, on the face and uh, reconstructions on the face. A lot of times with these pearly lesions, but they tend to stay fairly local, the basal yes. cells, right? They do not metastasize okay. for 99% of the time, um, but they still need to be addressed as quickly as possible because the scar itself can get disfiguring. They're not going to go away. They just get larger on in the area where they are, and basically you want to contain them to be as cosmetically pleasing as possible. Okay. And the squamous cells, that can metastasize. That can metastasize locally for the most part. Rarely, when left a long time, they can metastasize widely. The ones that are really bad that metastasize widely tend to start internally on the inner surface, and so that's more sort of the job of the ear, nose, and throat job. Okay. Um, in terms of skin color, 
and sun exposure. Can you go over a little bit of Sure. Um, certainly, uh, melanin is protective uh, of the skin for skin cancer and DNA damage from UV radiation. So darker skin types tend to be less prone to these non-melanoma skin cancers, but that's not to say that they don't get them. Um, I would say, you know, certainly, certainly African Americans, Indian Americans, those those ethnic groups tend to be less likely to get them. But certainly, Asian skin is, is fair game, and and most most Latin Americans certainly can are, are susceptible. Okay, and um, how much? You know, some people will come in with a basal cell and they go, "Oh, I never was in the sun very much." Is it? Is it definitely dose related or is it there's there, genetic predisposition? There is definitely a genetic predisposition and the gene has been isolated for it. Um, there may be other genes implicated as well, but the main one supposedly has been uh, isolated about two years ago. It's called the P16 gene. Hmm. Um, but I think that most people don't really realize when they're getting sun. I, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I think it takes two triggers. I think it's genetic. And how young are you seeing people now with? I see people in their 20s with their cell skin cancers. In South Florida, there are people who've been out in the sun since they were little kids without sunscreen. And so we're seeing with more and more. Instead of, with all of our public relations and all of this, people are still getting a lot of sun. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that for parents, very vigilant with their children in terms of the sun exposure. And that kind of habit, when started in childhood, will last a lifetime. So I think it's the most important time right. to start a good habit. Um, so basically, anytime we see something on our skin that just isn't healing, I think we need for to be more than a month, if it's okay. not healing, I think we need to be suspect. Um, even even in young people as young as 20 years old. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much.